Imagine a life unfettered by fear, a life where you boldly chase your dreams, unapologetically pursue your passions, and fearlessly embrace the unknown. Envision enrolling in that acting class you've always dreamed of, jetting off to explore far-flung destinations solo, or summoning the courage to confess your love to that special someone. Yet, for many of us, fear acts as an invisible barrier, its grip tightening with every opportunity for growth or adventure. It's that uncomfortable knot in your stomach, the voice whispering doubts in your ear, urging you to retreat to the safety of the familiar. But what if I told you that beyond fear lies a realm of boundless potential, a life brimming with excitement, growth, and fulfillment. In the tapestry of human experience, fear weaves its threads through the fabric of our lives, often dictating our choices and stifling our aspirations. Whether it's the fear of failure, rejection, or the unknown, it holds us captive within the confines of our comfort zones, shielding us from the exhilaration of uncharted territories. Yet, nestled within the heart of fear lies a paradoxical truth, to conquer it, we must first confront discomfort head-on. It's in these moments of unease, where the familiar fades and uncertainty reigns, that we find the catalyst for transformation. It's here that we discover the key to unlocking life's fullest potential. At its core, the journey to mastering fear is a deeply personal odyssey, one that transcends the boundaries of bravery or recklessness. It beckons us to lean into discomfort, to embrace the unknown with open arms, and to dance with fear as our steadfast companion rather than a formidable adversary. For it's only by navigating the murky waters of discomfort that we unearth hidden reservoirs of courage, resilience, and self-discovery. In doing so, we not only shatter the shackles of fear but also pave the way for a life lived on our own terms, a life rich in experiences, connections, and profound moments of growth. Within the pages of this narrative lie invaluable insights into the intricate dance between fear and fulfillment. It delves into the parallels between feedback and intimacy, illuminating how both require vulnerability, trust, and a willingness to embrace discomfort. Likewise, it explores the symbolic resonance of special edition perfumes, a potent reminder of the courage required to transcend fear and embrace authenticity. Moreover, it offers a tantalizing glimpse into the untold facets of successful hustling, drawing inspiration from the enigmatic legacy of Steve Jobs. In essence, this journey is not merely about conquering fear but about reclaiming agency over our lives, daring to defy the status quo, and charting a course towards our most authentic selves. It's a testament to the indomitable human spirit, to our capacity for growth, resilience, and unwavering courage in the face of adversity. So, as you embark on this voyage of self-discovery, remember this, fear may be a formidable foe, but within its depths lie the seeds of transformation and the promise of a life lived to the fullest. In the forthcoming discussion, we'll address these five primary inquiries. 1. How does fear manifest as an invisible barrier in our lives? Two. What paradoxical truth lies at the heart of conquering fear? 3. What is the significance of leaning into discomfort on the journey to mastering fear? 4. How do feedback and intimacy share common ground in their relationship with vulnerability? 5. What symbolic resonance do special edition perfumes hold in relation to courage and authenticity? By altering our perspective on fear, we can harness its energy to enhance our performance. Recall the sensation preceding a significant exam. Were you brimming with confidence, poised to conquer every question? Or did a knot of anxiety gnaw at your gut, fearing an inevitable stumble due to overlooked study material? Responses to anticipated fear vary widely among individuals. While some embrace the adrenaline surge of risky situations, many succumb to panic, triggering a gamut of physical reactions from dizziness to urgent bathroom needs. But fear not. By reinterpreting these physiological responses to challenges, we can transition from fretful apprehension to empowered action. The central tenet is clear, by reframing fear, we can leverage it to optimize our performance. Those confidently facing exams are said to be in a challenged state. Despite experiencing the same surge of adrenaline as their anxious counterparts, they interpret physiological cues as readiness for triumph rather than impending failure. Envisioning success activates the brain's reward center diminishing fear and enhancing cognitive function, facilitating swift and decisive decision-making. The encouraging news is that we can all cultivate a challenge state and respond constructively to stress. Prior to significant events, dedicate time to visualize your stellar performance. Whether it's a job interview or a crucial presentation, visualize yourself exuding confidence and competence. Repeated practice of this mental rehearsal bolsters feelings of control and diminishes fear's grip. Additionally, monitor your internal dialogue. Swap every negative thought with a positive affirmation. 
This tactic, long employed by athletes to manage pre-competition nerves, is a proven method to mitigate fear's influence. With consistent practice, entering a challenged state becomes second nature. By reframing our interpretation of physical fear responses, we not only embrace daunting challenges with greater ease but also cultivate resilience, preparedness, and adaptability. This newfound mindset equips us to navigate unforeseen obstacles with confidence and agility, a theme we'll delve deeper into in the subsequent discussion. The manner in which we navigate the hurdles in our path profoundly impacts our trajectory toward success. Take Eric Underwood, a luminary in the world of dance, whose journey exemplifies resilience and determination. Despite his late start at 14, a decade behind his peers, Underwood ascended to become one of the century's most acclaimed dancers, gracing stages with the American Ballet Theatre and making history as the first black soloist at London's Royal Ballet. His motivation wasn't born from a passion for dance but a fervent desire to transcend the challenges of his upbringing in Washington, D.C.'s gritty neighborhood. Underwood's tenacity was tested early on when, vying for admission to a local performing arts school, he stumbled during an acting audition. Rather than succumb to despair, he pivoted, seizing an opportunity he spotted, an opening in the school's dance program. Despite lacking any formal dance training, he boldly asserted his capabilities to the examiner, securing a spot through sheer determination and adaptability. The pivotal lesson embedded in Underwood's narrative is clear, our response to obstacles shapes our journey's trajectory. Unlike Underwood's resilience, many of us adopt avoidance strategies when confronted with challenges. Some opt to circumvent obstacles altogether, relinquishing their aspirations at the first sign of adversity. Others deflect accountability, attributing failure to external factors rather than introspecting on their role in the outcome. Still, others fabricate minor hurdles to evade genuine challenges, thereby stunting personal growth and limiting opportunities for advancement. These avoidance tactics hinder us from realizing our full potential, constraining our ability to surmount obstacles and achieve our goals. Yet, by recognizing our default responses to adversity, we gain insight into how we can adapt and evolve. By emulating Underwood's unwavering resolve and willingness to navigate obstacles creatively, we empower ourselves to confront setbacks head-on, forging paths to success even amidst adversity. Like the 14-year-old Underwood, we can chart a course through life's stumbling blocks, emerging stronger, more resilient, and ultimately triumphant. Fully addressing and processing traumatic experiences can catalyze profound positive transformation in our lives. Consider the harrowing ordeal of Saida Mughal on July 7, 2005, a fateful day that forever altered her trajectory. Rushing to work, she found herself unexpectedly rerouted onto a different subway car in North London, narrowly avoiding a catastrophic fate. Moments later, a deafening explosion rocked the train, engulfing it in darkness and smoke. As the grim reality unfolded, Mughal learned that a suicide bomber had claimed the lives of 26 passengers, predominantly in the front car, an event that would etch deep scars into her psyche. Yet, amidst the devastation, Mughal's journey through trauma illuminated a path of profound growth and resilience. Her narrative underscores a fundamental truth, processing trauma comprehensively can yield unexpected avenues for personal development and empowerment. Despite the anguish she endured, Mughal's transformative journey epitomizes the concept of post-traumatic growth an emergent phenomenon identified by researchers Richard Tedeschi and Lawrence Calhoun in the mid-1990s. Rather than succumbing to despair, Mughal embarked on a quest for understanding and action. Rather than fixating solely on her own suffering, she sought to comprehend the root causes of extremism, channeling her anguish into constructive endeavors. This led to the establishment of the Jan Trust, a beacon of hope aimed at preventing radicalization among vulnerable youth, a testament to the profound meaning she derived from her trauma. For individuals grappling with their own traumas, Mughal's story offers a blueprint for healing and growth. By bravely confronting the painful memories and emotions associated with their experiences, they pave the way for profound healing and transformation. Engaging in reflective practices such as journaling or dialogue can serve as a therapeutic outlet, enabling individuals to confront their pain head-on and contextualize their experiences within a broader framework. Though the journey towards healing may be arduous and fraught with challenges, it offers a pathway to profound inner peace and resilience. Through introspection and exploration, individuals can gradually untangle the knots of trauma, finding solace in newfound clarity and understanding. As they navigate this transformative process, they emerge stronger, wiser, and imbued with a newfound sense of purpose, a testament to the inherent capacity for growth and renewal in the face of adversity. To truly unlock our potential, 
we must liberate ourselves from the shackles of perfectionism, a pervasive force fueled by societal expectations and the relentless pursuit of approval. From the nerve-wracking anticipation of karaoke performances to the daunting task of bearing our emotions or vying for coveted career opportunities, the pressure to impress looms large, often overshadowing our innate capabilities and stifling our growth. At its core, the insatiable desire for perfection is deeply ingrained within us, a remnant of our evolutionary past when social acceptance was paramount for survival within close-knit tribes. However, in today's hyper-connected world, this innate drive manifests as a double-edged sword, propelling us toward unattainable ideals propagated by cultural norms and amplified by the pervasive influence of social media. Yet, the pursuit of perfection exacts a heavy toll, sapping our energy as we futilely strive to meet unrealistic standards or paralyzing us with the fear of falling short. In succumbing to this relentless pursuit, we inadvertently deprive ourselves of the opportunity to explore the depths of our potential and unearth the latent talents and abilities that lie dormant within. The crux of the matter lies in embracing imperfection as a gateway to growth and self-discovery. To embark on this transformative journey, we must confront two formidable adversaries, the spotlight effect and the suppression of our fears. Scientific research offers a compelling antidote to the pervasive myth of constant scrutiny, revealing that others' attention is far less focused on us than we assume, a phenomenon known as the spotlight effect. Armed with this knowledge, we can boldly step into the limelight, liberated from the paralyzing fear of judgment. Moreover, the path to overcoming social perfectionism entails embracing vulnerability and authenticity. Rather than suppressing our fears or dismissing them with a casual get over it, we must confront them head on and share them with trusted confidants. In doing so, we not only dispel the illusion of isolation but also cultivate a profound sense of courage and resilience. Through the act of sharing our fears, we forge genuine connections and empower ourselves to confront challenges with newfound confidence and clarity. In essence, the journey toward self-realization necessitates a radical shift in mindset a departure from the stifling confines of perfectionism toward a more compassionate and accepting embrace of our imperfections. By relinquishing the relentless pursuit of flawlessness, we pave the way for authentic self-expression, boundless growth, and the realization of our true potential. In the realm of professional success, the pursuit of regular feedback emerges as a cornerstone for growth and development. Patrick Doyle's tenure as CEO of Domino's in 2010 exemplifies this principle vividly. Confronted with a crisis stemming from lackluster product quality, Doyle embarked on a daring initiative, the pizza turnaround. Embracing customer feedback with unprecedented transparency, the company aired scathing reviews on national television before unveiling revamped recipes. The gamble paid off handsomely, catapulting Domino's to unprecedented success within months. The crux of this narrative lies in a fundamental truth, to thrive professionally, we must actively seek out and embrace feedback despite its inherent discomfort. While the prospect of criticism may evoke apprehension, it serves as a potent catalyst for personal and professional progress. In many ways, feedback resembles intimacy, a transformative force when received from a trusted source with genuine intentions. Ferris Dorr aptly likens this trusted confidant to a care coach, emphasizing the importance of cultivating a supportive and impartial relationship conducive to open dialogue. Establishing a safe and nurturing environment for feedback sessions is paramount, ensuring clarity and receptivity amid the inherent vulnerability of critique. To harness the transformative power of feedback effectively, one must approach the process with intentionally and commitment. Cultivating a consistent meeting schedule with one's care coach fosters accountability and momentum, enabling sustained growth over time. Preparation is key, with thoughtful reflection and targeted questions serving as the scaffolding for constructive dialogue. By articulating specific areas of inquiry and sharing them in advance, both parties can engage in meaningful discourse grounded in mutual understanding and respect. Yet, the reciprocity of feedback is a delicate dance, demanding gratitude and acknowledgement from both giver and receiver. Recognizing the inherent vulnerability of providing feedback, expressions of appreciation and tangible gestures of gratitude underscore the value of this reciprocal exchange. In cultivating a culture of feedback rooted in reciprocity and trust, individuals unlock the transformative potential of constructive critique, propelling them toward ever greater heights of professional success and fulfillment. Navigating constraints can serve as a crucible for creativity, compelling individuals to innovate and transcend limitations. Steven Spielberg's iconic film Jaws offers a poignant illustration of this phenomenon. Faced with a malfunctioning mechanical shark during filming, Spielberg was forced to pivot and devise an alternative solution, a decision that birthed one of cinema's most memorable scenes. 
By harnessing the constraints imposed by the situation, Spielberg crafted a sequence that evoked visceral terror, despite the absence of his titular antagonist. The essence of this anecdote lies in a profound truth, discomfort and constraints breed creativity. Throughout history, artists and innovators have leveraged limitations as catalysts for ingenuity. From the deliberate brushstrokes of the Impressionists to the handheld cinematography of DOMA filmmakers, constraints have fostered innovation by compelling individuals to reimagine conventional approaches and embrace unconventional solutions. Moreover, commercial enterprises have likewise recognized the creative potential inherent in constraints. Apple's expedited production of the iPod within a tight time frame and Tinder's rapid development by a small team underscore the transformative power of limited resources in driving innovation and accelerating progress. In her own creative process, the author attests to the liberating effects of constraints, which compel her to operate with boldness, decisiveness, and authenticity. Freed from the burden of endless possibilities, she is propelled to trust her instincts and produce work that resonates with authenticity and conviction. Research corroborates this notion, suggesting that constraints activate cognitive processes conducive to creativity, fostering a broader perceptual scope and stimulating idea generation. Moreover, constraints engender heightened engagement levels, bolstering commitment and perseverance in the face of challenges. For those seeking to reignite creative momentum or revitalize stagnant projects, embracing constraints offers a potent strategy for catalyzing innovation. By imposing deadlines, limiting resources, and delineating strict parameters, individuals are compelled to tap into their innate creativity, trusting their instincts and propelling their endeavors forward with renewed vigor and purpose. In embracing discomfort and constraints, we unlock the latent potential for creativity and innovation that resides within us, transcending limitations to realize bold and transformative visions. Achieving true success necessitates a willingness to embrace failure as an integral part of the journey, a notion vividly exemplified by the world of limited edition products, such as fragrances showcased at cosmetics counters. These ostensibly exclusive offerings serve as market tests for companies, providing valuable insights into consumer preferences and product viability. Consider Tom Ford's fragrance, Soleil Blanc, whose fate hung in the balance during its test run. Had it faltered, it would have quietly faded into obscurity, a stark reminder that even the most celebrated endeavors face the prospect of failure. At its core, the imperative to embrace failure hinges on distinguishing between two distinct manifestations, the consequence of laziness, carelessness, or incompetence, and the calculated risk-taking inherent in venturing into uncharted territory. Yet, contemporary Western culture often conflates these divergent forms of failure, overlooking the inherent value of smart failure, the kind that accompanies bold experimentation and innovation. Indeed, smart failure is not a testament to ineptitude but a testament to courage, a willingness to navigate the unknown without the safety net of a predetermined roadmap. However, the journey towards success extends beyond the initial endeavor. It encompasses a continuous process of reflection and refinement, wherein failures serve as invaluable learning opportunities. This process demands a willingness to delve into the discomfort zone, scrutinizing every facet of the failed venture with ruthless objectivity. By dissecting failures and discerning their underlying causes, individuals glean insights that inform future endeavors, fortifying their resilience and sharpening their strategic acumen. Crucially, the temptation to assign blame must be resisted, shifting the focus from finger-pointing to constructive analysis. By interrogating what went wrong rather than fixating on whom to hold accountable, individuals foster a culture of accountability and collective growth, unearthing invaluable lessons that pave the path to future success. In essence, the journey toward true success is paved with failures, a testament to the audacity of human ambition and the resilience of the human spirit. By embracing failure as a catalyst for growth and innovation, individuals transcend the fear of imperfection, embarking on a transformative journey marked by courage, resilience, and unyielding determination. Elevating your hustle to new heights requires a strategic approach that transcends mere self-interest, embracing the ethos of reciprocity to forge mutually beneficial relationships. While luminaries like Steve Jobs may have possessed an innate knack for navigating the hustle with audacity and aplomb, for many, the prospect of hustling remains fraught with discomfort and apprehension, a daunting endeavor fraught with the fear of rejection and judgment. Enter reciprocity, the transformative technique that imbues the hustle with an aura of collaboration and generosity. Sarah Blakely, the visionary behind Spanx, exemplifies the power of reciprocity in action. Faced with tepid interest in her revolutionary shapewear, Blakely sees the opportunity to cultivate market demand by enlisting the support of her friends. 
by offering them a free pair of Spanx in exchange for their patronage. Blakely transformed her hustle into a gesture of mutual assistance, fostering goodwill and loyalty among her network. At its essence, the key to mastering the art of reciprocity lies in identifying opportunities to add value and extend a helping hand. Before embarking on your hustle, conduct thorough research to understand the needs and preferences of your target audience. Armed with this knowledge, explore avenues through which you can offer tangible benefits, whether it's leveraging your expertise to enhance their social media presence or facilitating valuable connections within your network. Crucially, clarity and transparency are paramount when articulating your request and delineating the terms of reciprocity. By clearly outlining what you seek in return for your assistance and ensuring that your expectations are realistic and feasible, you foster a sense of trust and transparency that underpins fruitful collaboration. Moreover, the manner in which you frame your offer of assistance is equally pivotal. Cultivate a demeanor of warmth and authenticity, eschewing the trappings of aggressive solicitation in favor of a genuine desire to support and uplift others. By approaching the hustle with an attitude of generosity and goodwill, you position yourself as a valuable ally rather than a relentless opportunist. In essence, by embracing reciprocity as a guiding principle in your hustle, you transcend the transactional nature of traditional networking, forging genuine connections rooted in shared goals and mutual benefit. In doing so, you not only amplify your impact but also cultivate a reputation as a trusted collaborator and ally, a testament to the transformative power of strategic generosity in the pursuit of success. In the journey of personal growth and development, one of the most formidable adversaries we face is the innate instinct to shy away from discomfort and fear. These emotions often serve as warning signals, prompting us to retreat to the safety of familiar territory. Yet, what we fail to realize is that by succumbing to these impulses, we unwittingly stifle our own potential and rob ourselves of the exhilarating rewards that lie beyond our comfort zones. It's in those moments of discomfort, those brief flashes of fear, that we have the opportunity to push our boundaries, challenge ourselves, and truly grow. The BMD method offers a powerful framework for navigating these moments of discomfort, empowering us to confront our fears head on and emerge stronger on the other side. By acknowledging our fears rather than ignoring them, we begin to dismantle their hold over us, gaining clarity and perspective in the process. From there, we can identify practical strategies to alleviate our discomfort in the moment, whether it's through simple relaxation techniques or seeking support from trusted allies. But perhaps the most transformative aspect of the BMD method lies in its ability to reframe discomfort as an invigorating adrenaline rush, a signal that we are on the brink of something extraordinary. Instead of viewing fear as a paralyzing force, we learn to harness its energy to propel us forward fueling our determination and resilience in the face of adversity. With each BMD conquered, we inch closer to realizing our full potential and embracing the limitless possibilities that await us. As we embark on this journey of self-discovery and growth, it's essential to remember the words of Nelson Mandela, who famously said, I learned that courage was not the absence of fear, but the triumph over it. Indeed, true courage lies not in the absence of fear, but in our ability to confront it and emerge victorious. Similarly, Eleanor Roosevelt reminds us that you must do the thing you think you cannot do. It is only by pushing past our perceived limitations, by venturing into the unknown and embracing discomfort, that we can truly unleash our inner potential. So, let us embark on this journey together, armed with the tools and wisdom to confront our fears, challenge our assumptions, and unlock the boundless possibilities that lie within. Together, we can overcome adversity, embrace discomfort, and strive towards a brighter, more fulfilling future. Until next time, remember to keep working on self-development, for it is through continuous growth and introspection that we truly flourish.